If you think of the heroes of 20th century physics, you tend to think of people such as Albert Einstein, Richard Feynman, maybe even somebody like Stephen Hawking. One name that is not as well known with the general public is the name of Paul Dirac. And that is a bit of a shame, because Paul Dirac was one of the most important contributors to the development of the field of quantum mechanics in the early 20th century. He has contributed an awful lot to theories of physics. He was the person who predicted the existence of positrons, for example. He has also predicted other things such as magnetic monopoles, which have so far never been observed, as far as I know, and a few other things. He was somebody whose evaluation of a physical theory was driven by its mathematical beauty. He would consider something worth investigating if he, it was, in his opinion, mathematically beautiful. And as such, he is one of the architects, if not one of the layers of the foundations of what has later become, for example, string theory. That is also based on the same sort of principle as the one that was driving him, this guiding by physical and mathematical beauty. But as a person he was a very reticent, very reclusive sort of character, and it was very hard to get to know him and to engage with him, and that is probably one of the reasons why he hasn't become one of physics superstars. But still, it would be a terrible shame to forget that he existed. And it is important, maybe, that we should, you know, give him his place in this pantheon of the gods of <laughs> physics, geniuses, for want of a better expression. And I think Graham Farmelow has done a great job um, making the person that was Paul Dirac more accessible to the general public and helping you understand who this man was, what he was like, what drove him, and the contributions he has made to science. So with that in mind, I thoroughly, for, thoroughly recommend this book here, titled the strangest man that goes through Paul Dreck's life explains, you know, to some extent what may have caused his reclusiveness, his quietness, his awkwardness around people. It also touches on the possibility that he might have been artistic towards the end of the book. And it goes through his life and the contributions he's made to science and explains why we owe him such a debt of gratitude. He was a very interesting character and the book is great not just you know from a perspective of finding out you know what he has contributed to science but simply uh, in order to read about a very interesting life indeed. So Graham Farmelow the strangest man. Enjoy.